Squash and Stretch is one of my favorite ways to bring lots of life to any animation. Once you learn how to use it properly, it'll completely transform the way that you work. I've created an After Effects preset for applying Squash and Stretch to any layer type and gives you some extra features that you couldn't get if you were using just the scale property. And I'm making it available for you to download along with the project files for this video, so just check the link down in the description to get that. If you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed and let's take a look at how this preset works. Let's start by just seeing the result of applying this preset. Here I have a text layer, my logo, and a shape layer, and I've applied the same keyframes to all three layers. This is what the Squash and Stretch preset allows you to do. Now, I've added in some position animation, obviously, but let's just start with the text layer here, and I'll bring up the keyframes. There's a Squash and Stretch pseudo effect, meaning these are just expression controls. It's not actually gonna do anything if you turn this on and off. This is just what's driving the other effects that are actually creating the Squash and Stretch. But the the main control is the squash percentage. So that is what I'm using to animate the squash and stretch of my text layer. If I move this below 100%, it's going to stretch it upwards, squash it inwards. And if I move past 100%, it's going to stretch it out sideways, squashing it vertically. And it's doing it in a pretty accurate way to maintain volume of the layer. The way that the calculation is taking place is actually more accurate than the way that I would typically do it using just the scale property. The only other keyframes that I have here are the Y position. So let me just disable all of the effects and show you what that text animation looks like. So the motion upwards is all that we're getting out of that Y position. Everything else, all of that cartoony elasticiness is coming from a couple of different effects. And it's really just the transform effect. We've got rotation for the first instance and distortion for the second. And stacking those together, linking them with some expressions, doing some calculations, and then tying them all to the pseudo effect makes for a really nice and clean way to apply squash and stretch to any layer type. And I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to my friend Evan, who's the one who actually figured out how to get this preset to identify whether the layer you're applying it to is vector or raster and update accordingly. So that's why this can work on any layer type without you having to do anything. He is available for hire, by the way. You should probably go check out his work. Thank you so much, Evan, for your help in making this preset work. Now let's actually walk through the rest of the controls and we'll jump over to my logo. This is not continuously rasterized. I'll just point out if I turn that switch on, nothing changes. The squash and stretch still works. The effects are updating values to make sure that this looks exactly the way it should, no matter what layer type you're applying it to. So let me just take off all the keyframes that I've applied and we'll walk through everything. In fact, I'll just reset the effect and I'll turn off the other two layers. So our squash and stretch controls that we have are setting the anchor point, which this is a drop down menu. You can change this to be whatever you want. I currently have it set to the bottom. So that's going to find the bottom center of the layer and that's where the squash and stretch anchor point is going to come from. Now we do have this buffer between the bottom of my logo and the layer bounds down here at the bottom. So I've also added in an anchor offset. So if I just squash this down, you see that it's not really squashing from that chin point of my logo. I could move this up a little bit and now it should be aligned fairly close. So don't worry about all of these little 2D point controls. That's just necessary for the way that these effects are working, but use that anchor offset to align that squash point to whatever you need on that layer. But we can change that anchor point to be anything at any point. So if I want it to be at the center, then I'd probably take the anchor offset off and now it's gonna squash and stretch from that center point. I could do it from the left center edge, I could do it from the bottom right corner, and no matter what type of layer you're applying it to, that should always work. In addition to this squash and stretch, we also have rotation. And this is really unique because if I rotate the layer, you'll notice that the squash and stretch is not rotating with it. This is why we have two different instances of the transform effect. The first one to rotate the layer and the second one to apply that distortion. So I could really squash this out and then rotate and you'll notice my logo is rotating within that distortion. And that's really useful for when you're trying to apply squash and stretch to something that is rotating that isn't just a perfectly circular flat circle. This will rotate the texture of the layer before that squash and stretch is applied. We also have the ability to skew. So let me turn that rotation back down. I'll turn the squash actually back to 100%. And now the skew, this is just a feature of the transform effect. So I put it in there. And with that skew and the skew axis, you could change the direction that this is squashing and stretching. 
And in this case, they're working together. You can apply the squash and then skew it in one direction, as well as change the skew axis so you could kind of give some motion to a object that's not just moving up and down, but maybe at an angle. And then finally, we have this admin section. This is where some math calculation is happening and how it's able to determine what type of layer it's looking at. And I do wanna point one thing out. Let me just delete all of the effects by pressing Control Shift E so that there are no effects on that. If I bring up, say, the ball layer and I wanna copy this over to my logo now, I'll just select those effects, copy them, and then paste them it might not work the way that you expect. So you see how this distortion is now happening from a completely different place than what I would want, which currently it's set to the bottom center. And that's actually because of this admin calculation. This C value, if you right click on it and just say reset, everything will update. This value has to be in the center of the layer in order for the calculations to work on any layer type. So if you're ever getting an issue where the squash and stretch is happening from a completely out of left field position, just open up that admin section, right click on that C value and reset it, and that should fix the problem. So those are the controls of squash and stretch. Let me just show you a few examples of how I used it. So this is just in a little ice cream truck. I applied the preset to the truck, which is separate from the wheels, and the wheels also have it. I applied a skew to those wheels so that it looks like they're kind of leaning forward and giving a little bit of life to that motion. I can turn that off and back on so you can see the difference. The rotation of those layers is also coming from the squash and stretch preset. And it just brings a lot of life to everything compared to if I were to turn all of that off, now the truck is just bouncing up and down, the wheels aren't even rotating. So all of that animation is coming from this preset and it makes for something that just has a lot more life than if there wasn't that squash and stretch there. I also applied it to some text. This is a regular text layer, along with a bunch of effects stacked on top of each other. These effects here are what are giving that text the styling that you're seeing. Again, this is all available for download. If you wanna check that out, you can walk through all of that. But I also added a warp effect and added some keyframes on that to give the bendiness to that squash and stretch. And then last, I have these three balls that are bouncing, basketball, tennis ball, and baseball, and I've applied squash and stretch to all of them, taking advantage of some of the extra controls like the rotation and the skew to give lots more life and personality to these layers, rather than, again, just having these balls bouncing and moving around with no squash and stretch. It really adds a lot more life and personality and cartooniness to this otherwise pretty stale animation. And my favorite method for installing presets is just coming to your effects and presets panel. And I like to install custom presets in the user presets folder. That's where it is right there, but just select any of these presets, click on the menu and go to reveal in Explorer or Finder on a Mac. I will bring it up here. Just drag the FFX file into this folder, close out and then refresh the menu by going back in there and say refresh list. And it should show up right there in After Effects without having to restart the program. And that's really it. I hope that you enjoy the squash and stretch preset, that it's useful to you. If you do use it in your work, please tag me on Instagram at Jake in Motion so that I can see it and I can share it. I want as many people to know about this preset as possible so that they can start using it in their own work. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Leave comments down below if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. And if you're interested in supporting more tutorials like this one, please consider becoming a patron. I wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons for your continued support and thank you for watching this video. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.